the other games we're talking about on today's show is... Frozen Synapse. Frozen Synapse. What can you tell us about this, Bryce? It's a turn-based strategy game where you are you plan a move blindly against your opponent. Yeah. And then they're planning the same at the, at the same time, and then you both submit a turn. Yeah. So it so it's online or it, it's yeah. online. There's campaign campaign and modes and everything. Uh, P P C by the way, everybody. Uh, and the graphics, as we see over here, we can see on our screen, they're like kind of a vector, virtual reality type graphics. Yes. So, uh, all right, let's uh, explain here a little bit. We're going to look a little closer here up. All right, so as you can see, this start out with a planning phase where you can press, uh, you click on the screen to make different military move, uh, units, units move, move around. around. Uh, gotcha. Then you can aim the rocket launchers and grenade people. You can have them aim to a specific point, and then uh, the gunmen, you just have them have their gun out or not yeah. have their gun out, and you can have them aim, but you can't tell them when to fire. But okay. with a rocket launcher guy, you can. Ah, okay. And then and then you submit the move. Then you submit the move. The enemy plans their move, not knowing what your move is. Right. And then you see how it turns out. And that's where we get outcome. And as you can see, because I was messing around for this one, I lost the match rather badly. <laughs> well, you know, I'm sure you get to play again. <laughs> yeah. So, you, this is a game you recommend. It's pretty cool. Yes, it's got a very nice soundtrack, too. Is it available? How's it available? Steam. Through Steam. All right. So, let's see. We'll look at a little bit more gameplay here of the uh, game. and uh, And we'll be right back. Okay, so it's that time again, and uh, of course, that time means zombie time. So here's a game called Zombie Gunship. So you can see it's got some uh, pretty cool graphics. Let's get that glare out of there, and we'll move it back a little so you can see what's going on. Uh, you're in a giant uh, C-130 Super Duper loaded gunship ready to blast some zombies. And it's a pretty simple game. So we'll just start with the bunker area numero uno. And we'll say engage. And it's really pretty simple because you've got this um, viewfinder. And you're going to look around. And uh, you defend the bunker. And if I swivel my head around, there's the bunker entrance over there. So I'm... I'm gunning. So now what we need to do is look for some zombies. Now there's this wide view up here. And then there's also a zoom view. Now right now I'm not seeing any zombies. It's pretty quiet out there in the front. And you can see it's like a night vision type thing. The plane is circling around the bunker. It's got to protect all those scientists inside. They're looking for a cure to this horrible zombie plague. And we go out, and at some point, some of these nasty zombies are going to come wandering in. Now, I think there is a... Oh, skip tutorial. All right, that's why. It was a, starting to give an explanation of everything. Oh, there he is. Little pesky zombies. Uh, now the question is if I can remember how to fire... Any suggestions, Bryce? <laughs> oh, some zombies are actually getting close into that bunker. They're wandering in. As you can see, they show up on infrared even though they're dead. Uh, I'm not sure why that is. I wish I knew. I wish I could remember how to shoot. <laughs> uh, pretty soon they're going to get in that bunker. And uh, everyone's going to die. Well, there they go. They're going into the bunker, and this is what happens if you fail to fail. You know, you don't make any money, and you get the money, and then you can upgrade stuff. 
apparently I killed a zombie. I, I don't know if you saw that, but somewhere in there, a zombie, maybe he tripped and fell and hit his head on a rock or something. Because I think that happens to zombies every once in a while. Uh, okay, pretty soon it's going to explain to me how to play. You must defend the bunker. The green dots point to the bunker. Swipe to find it. There it is. Top right to switch weapons modes. Ah, so now I'm actually on the cannon. And now you can see that there's a button. So we go out here and we'll try and find some zombies. Now, uh, so far, it's looking like around the entrance of the bunker, nobody's there. Let's look around and see out maybe at the edge of the woods or the desert. Kind of looks like the desert. Forgot, we keep forgetting that it's in the tutorial mode and then the zombies show up. First, you gotta get out of the tutorial mode. All right, so here we have some civilians coming in to get rescued. So you can see they glow white on the infrared because they're living, breathing creatures. There's a guy coming in way over here, people over there. Oh, we see some zombies here. Let's take care of those zombies. And of course, we have a very heavy caliber weapon. So if we get anywhere near these zombies, generally speaking, uh, they're in big trouble. And you're gonna have to lead them a little bit, because they're pesky. Now let's go back out to the wide view. We can see there's some humans over here. There's a couple zombies hot on their tail. You can be generous with your ammo or, or uh, we're not. Oh, oh, we got all kinds of trouble over here. So as you play, of course, it gets more and more challenging. Uh, it's a lot easier to play right side up than upside down. And you'll find that uh, you get other kinds of weapons that you can purchase and use these to uh oh get some of these pesky zombies that are seem to like know how to avoid bullets uh oh somebody got in there and of course there's all sorts of bonuses you can get for obliterating zombies there's a couple zombies. See, danger, zombie breach imminent. So, if zombies get in the bunker, they have to close it off and they can't take any more survivors. So your level's gonna end. So you need to be able to clear the zombies um, and survive. I got some coins there. If I get uh, a lot more coins uh, and different things, I can achieve basic goals and stuff. They've got all kinds of neat little things that they've, again, added on to this game since it first came out. Uh, here you have some summary. It looks like I got 30 zombies. I saved seven humans. I didn't accidentally shoot any humans, which is a pretty good thing. And I got a few field challenges, coins. These are like your trophies and stuff like that. Um, and then, of course, there's all sorts of upgrade options. So this is a pretty neat little game. Also, uh, as I recall, it's about a buck. Um, so 
Gunship, oh look, they'll give you a thousand coins if you like them on Facebook. Um, and you can use those to buy some new cool stuff. All right, hopefully we've got some uh, decent focus. So another little iPhone game we'd like to talk about is uh, Gridly. Now, I haven't actually had a chance to really play Gridly, but uh, I did get it. And the re <laughs> falling away, the reason I did get it, it's this little game right here, is because this is actually a fully functioning MAME emulator, uh, M-A-M-E. And if you've ever heard of that, what that is is on the PC and other platforms, it's an emulator that lets you play old arcade games if you have what are known as ROMs, which is the little sort of program that the, used to you know, create the old game. And so this Gridly game, you can actually load up ROMs that you download on the internet and play various games. Um, it provides you know, a basic control pad, a uh, button over here, and I'm not sure exactly how you play this game or what it is. It looks like there's a little Q-Birdish type character running around on a grid, and um, he shoots. So my guess is that, uh, like an old arcade game, see it says coin here, we'll do that means we put a coin in. Uh, so you can see now there's one credit, two credits, three credits. We'll get ourselves four credits. We'll start the game using the start button over here. Shoot opponents as they pass overhead and watch their shadows. Now this is going to be tough again because we're playing upside down. Uh, I'm not sure I'm controlling it. It looks like he's running around on his own. It's hard to tell. Oh, I haven't actually started it. OK. That would explain a lot. Press Start. I don't know about you folks out there, but my fingers sometimes just don't seem to trigger the touch screen. All right, press Fire when ready. Okay, this finger is controlling, all right. It's, again, playing upside down is kind of hard. Can you hear that? There's making noises. <laughs> I don't think this game is playable upside down when you're trying to look at a monitor over on the side to see what's going on. Uh, let's see, so. Go that way, go this way. So the, the, the touch area is a little, you gotta kinda of really go to the edges of this touch pad to make it work. And uh, what you're doing is you're trying to get underneath these little creatures where their shadows are. So it looks like I actually got somebody there for a second. Yep, and, but I got squashed. So anyway, this is the game. It's pretty simple. However, um, my understanding is that you can go in, and uh, I think you have to use iTunes, but you can find the app, and you can actually load in other games that the main emulator can then play. So this one actually comes with Gridly, obviously. Um, and then you can add in other games as you find them. But uh, you'd have to check the website out as to exactly the procedure for that. But I believe in iTunes, there's a little file section for this. And then you drop them in there. And, uh, and then it puts them on your iPhone, and you can play them. If they haven't disabled it by now, apparently Apple took down the last main emulator that went up. So you might want to get this game now if you like playing old arcade games, sort of Ms. Pac-Man, Asteroids, um, all the old, a lot of the games that used to come out on um, the Japanese PC system, uh, Metal Gear Solid, uh, games like that before they were on PlayStation. And so that's Gridly, interesting little game. I want to check it out. It's uh, free or 99 cents. 
Uh, I can't remember which. What? Deus Ex. Deus Ex, a game that came out in 2000. Yeah, around 2000, uh, 2000 or 2001. 2001, yeah. Yeah. That was a long time ago. Very long. Back, time ago. Uh, I believe that was Warren Spector and uh, Harvey Witchboy Smith, maybe. Yeah, I think I've heard those names in relation yes. to this game. And uh, the original game used the Unreal Engine yep. uh, on the PC, and then they ported it over to the PlayStation 2. An amazing feat. Yeah. Uh, obviously, it didn't look the same, and uh, I think it was on Xbox as well. I believe. I think so. Um, I was telling Bryce earlier. My cousin uh, played both uh, all the versions of the games multiple times, and, and did speed runs, did every kind of thing he could imagine in that game. It was a game that offered lots, lots of, of possibilities. Yeah. All right. So why don't you tell us about it? Okay. So the game is a uh, was one of the first first person RPGs ever. I can't think of any before it. Yeah. Uh, no, I can't think of any. So yeah, it was a pretty innovative game when it came out. Uh, when I played it, it took about 40 hours to beat. Pretty good. And that was, I was not the greatest at it. And you just played, that was just for one run through, right? And you yeah. can play and get multiple endings. And yeah, I did a terrible job at it. <laughs> I tried to go through stealthily, but... You weren't very stealthy. I wasn't very stealthy because my favorite weapon was the uh, rocket launcher. <laughs> the stealth rocket build. <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> so if anybody like saw me. So you, what, you had a, a silencer on it like <laughs> <laughs> size of a trash can? And so if anybody saw me and I got caught, I just rocket. Rocketed the heck out of them. Yeah, until there was nobody left in the building. Because I think in the game there's an advantage to... Um, going through the game and not killing anybody. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, my understanding, there's all these different, you can do stealth, go through it stealthily, you can go through tech, combination, shooting, all-out shooting. So stuff ends up worse uh, going through it if you kill everybody. Oh, so you get like a bad ending type thing? Yeah. So that may just they be consider for the new you one. evil. But the new one, well, I have the new one, but I haven't played it yet. Uh, Human Revolution, yeah. uh, and that one was done actually by a different studio. I guess that after the second one, the game kind of went into a, what hiatus, retirement for a while. Yeah, the second. And then one they was switched not, developers, and um, was it Ubisoft? Good. I think took it over. Yeah. And it, Ubisoft is an interesting developer because they have this, uh, I think, fantastic uh, art direction on all their games. I don't and, know if it was Ubisoft. I think. Was it, it Edios? Oh, Edios. Or, but, sorry, Square oh, Enix took it over. Square Enix, right. And they, sorry. But they use the Montreal studio, which is, yeah. that's why I get confused. They, they, it would be soft. They're all in Montreal. So up in Montreal, let's yeah. just say that. Um, they have fantastic art direction on all the games. I don't know what it is with those Canadians, but mm. uh, they really know how to, to, to create the worlds and the environments and do different styles. Mm. Um, but the games sometimes are buggy. Uh, I remember that being an issue. I think with the Deus Ex, at least the original one, yeah. the Unreal Engine was really solid. It's always been a very solid engine. And you, you don't see too many bugs with that, unless it's heavily modded by a developer. Yeah. Um, there were, I'm trying to think of... With Deus Ex, there are, I haven't noticed any bugs in it. Yeah, solid all the way. Yeah, it was pretty solid, especially for such an old game. But the one that Human Revolution was pretty buggy. Yeah, the second one. Yeah, I think that was where they were pushing everything a little. Or is that, wait. Human, That's the third one. Third one. Yeah. Oh, so you can't rely on me for accurate information. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I haven't played that one, so we'll see. Maybe I can play that through, and then we can do a little update on another yeah, I episode. Had issues with things disappearing. You mean? Uh, Levels like being see-through so that it was whoa. just the skybox. Wow. Being but did you, did you mess around with it when that happened, or? Uh, then it crashed. Oh. That happened once when I was playing uh, the Naughty Dog, uh, I think it was the second one. Something glitched and, you know, you could see through the whole world and all this stuff. And it was crazy because it was in the middle of a gunfight. And it was actually a lot of fun sneaking around and, yeah. and things. But then when you're trapped outside the world, at some point you got to just quit out because, you know, that's yeah. it. You're stuck in the game. But uh, sometimes bugs can be fun. Yeah. But then sometimes they ruin the game. There was a game called 13, 
which was a heavily modded, and that's what I was referring to earlier, Unreal Engine game, and I think that was by Ubisoft. And uh, that was like a comic book graphic novel game, and yeah. it was, uh, I think, the first one that tried that style, and graphically, that game was amazing. Uh, but it was so buggy. I mean, you can complete the game. And yeah. Some people could, but uh, I wasn't able to, and it was really disappointing because it was just such a stylish game. And then later on, other games have come along and kind of adopted... Uh, that sort of graphic novel look to their games. I think Max Payne did it a bit, and um, uh, the third one, and I think there have been a few others. And it sort of the, it had cell shading, and it had all kinds of cool features. But when you know they added all that to the engine, they broke the, broke everything. Yeah. So, so Human Revolution Deus Ex, uh, we'll check out. I'll I'll get some footage of that of me playing, and I'll give you my impressions. And but the original Deus Ex, and even the second one great game uh i remember i think in the first one I, you know you crawl it was one of those things you crawl and you you're in a building and you're going by and you see some guys sitting there on the couch watching tv and i was like hmm and i stopped and watched tv with them and they had all these little television shows they had made it was almost like a, you know like a grand theft auto or one of the rockstar games just real depth to the world yeah. and you could sit there and watch tv watch cartoons and stuff with these guys for you know, uh, 20 minutes, and it was yeah. always new stuff that you were watching. And that's just in a, something that you pass by in one room in the game. So yeah. there's a lot of different things that you can do, ways to approach a situation. You can, as we said, uh, tackle the game in a lot of different ways. Yeah. All right. All right, so that's Deus Ex. And so here we have Gun Runner, which is a game for iOS. And this is sort of a... A little platforming game that reminds me of the Metal Gear or Metal Slug series, not Metal Gear. Jeez, I can never get anything right anymore. Uh, so you can buy weapons with the dollars you earn in the game. And we've got a game pause here, so we'll play along. You see you fly in a helicopter and you jump out. And you, what you do is you use your finger, you tap on the screen, and you can jump and kind of direct your shots. And you'll see, it, uh, uh, well, I die a lot because I'm not... It's kind of hard to uh, demo a game and play it at the same time. Um, but you get cash for collecting the coins, which then you can use to buy guns uh, that shoot more bullets or rockets or different things. You can see here you can buy extra hearts and health, uh, supercharge uh, your weapons. And, of course, you can put your stats up on Game Center. So there we'll buy an extra life since I'm about to lose a whole bunch here. And we'll go back in. The graphics are really nice. Um, as I said, reminiscent of uh, the Metal Slug games, but there's not uh, the enemies don't have that sort of faux Nazi look to them. They're just kind of regular soldiers. You see, I fall again because I'm terrible at the jumping part, and, and probably that's what most of this video is going to be: is me uh, falling as I do the jumps improperly over and over again. The other nice thing about this game is the soundtrack, uh, which um, you can't hear because uh, this voiceover is being recorded because we forgot to turn on the mics when I did the original video. So may maybe we'll figure out a way I can get some of the sound back in. But uh, here I actually made it over the first jump and you can see I drop once again. So maybe we'll just skip ahead to a part where I actually survive. And one of the things you might notice through all these playthroughs is the coin placements are random. So it's not just the same exact repetitive pattern over and over. You can see the gaps are different. The coin placement is different. Um, there's a little bit of variation in the enemies. So it's actually a fun game to kind of play, but it can be challenging because rather than mastering one particular sort of platforming level, you kind of have to develop your skills a little bit more to adapt to the situation as it goes. And of course, you'll have helicopters coming and shooting at you, soldiers, vehicles, all sorts of stuff, most of which I'm too poor a player to show you in this review. <laughs> but I do, I do find it a fun little game to play. You can pull it out and play it for a little while. Um, that's the thing with the iOS games. A lot of them are designed you know, to quickly jump in and jump out of. See, if you look in the upper left here, you'll see that there's a disc. And if you follow that link, that takes you to the guy who did all the music. Um, and you can actually get the album and download it. And he's got sort of this cool old school retro 
chic ethic. It's got a floppy disk logo, which uh, Sisyphus. You want to say Sisyphus after that, uh, the man of the mythology, but it's not. It's just Sisyphus. So I don't know. Maybe it's a reference to syphilis, but for all you kids, don't look. So this game actually, uh, when I checked the updates on the website, it does have uh, some in-app purchasing where you can buy stuff with money. Like, uh, you know, you can buy tons of money in the game using $10 of real money. Um, so it does have some of that in the game. Um, one of the things, though, that we did learn is that the game is currently broken on iOS 6. Uh, what will happen when you start it up is the title screen freezes a bit and then you get into the game and it plays it but it freezes and you have to stop your iPhone like shut it off completely power it down and reboot it and then the game will play fine even though it has the weird glitch at the beginning it's kind of strange um, the developer Man Up Studio says on their website that they've got a patch in with Apple that should come out you know whenever it gets approved 